According to a shocking new study, early humans, likely Denisovans, expanded as far north as Siberia 400,000 years ago during marine isotope stage 11. During warm periods in Earth's history, known as interglacials, glaciers the size of continents receded, exposing new landscapes. These were new worlds for early humans to explore and exploit, and 400,000 years ago, central Siberia was a terra nullius that had never been inhabited by humans. The Siberian site contains stone tool evidence of human presence 417,000 years ago, making it the most ancient early human site discovered this far north. So this site significantly changes our understanding of when humans reached high latitudes. The site of Daring Yuryak in central Siberia may change our understanding of when humans first reached high latitudes. Since its discovery by Russian archaeologist Yuri Mokhanov in 1982, the site on the Lena River in eastern Russia, at the same latitude as central Alaska, has remained a mystery. Eventually, thousands of artifacts were extracted from the excavation. To date, stone tools scientists developed an innovative dating method using cosmogenic nuclides that can go back five million years, the critical time frame for human evolution. This method has produced definitive ages at other important sites, including the 3.4 million-year-old Australopithecus at Sturkfontein in southern Africa and the 0.77 million-year-old Jokudian Homo erectus site, also known as Peking Man. The technique measures exploding stars, supernovae, outside our solar system, which emit streams of cosmic rays into Earth's upper atmosphere, resulting in showers of secondary cosmic rays that react with minerals in rocks and soils to produce radioactive nuclides in tiny but measurable amounts. According to the study, when stars explode in a supernova, they send out streams of high-energy particles throughout the universe, primarily protons and alpha particles, which eventually reach us on Earth after millions of years. Secondary cosmic rays pass through our bodies and almost everything around us, and they travel a few meters underground to interact with atoms in soil and rock. This generates tiny but measurable amounts of new isotopes known as cosmogenic nuclides. Beryllium-10 and aluminium-26 are particularly useful because we know the rates of production and decay of these nuclides, they are radioactive, making them an excellent dating tool for understanding the Earth's history over the last five million years or so. The technique has enabled researchers to propose an answer to another mystery, the possible presence of humans in the Siberian Arctic around 400,000 years ago. By applying this method to the sediment layer containing the stone tools, they were able to determine a burial age of 417,000 years, making this Siberia's earliest securely dated human occupation. The location is the northernmost known presence of early humans, and the burial age of approximately 417,000 years ago corresponds to an interglacial period that was among the warmest in the last one million years. Researchers believe that early humans used these warm intervals to disperse to higher latitudes, where they may have hunted mammoths, holy rhinos, and giant beavers. The intervening glacial periods in this region were bitterly cold, eliminating the possibility of a suitable habitat for humans, so climate had a significant impact on human behavior back then, as it does today. According to a new analysis of geological evidence, these Stone Age humans were able to live in the forbidding environs of Siberia as early as 400,000 years ago, hundreds of thousands of years before experts thought possible. Even now, in a relatively warm period in Earth's recent climate history, the region, 75 miles south of Yakutsk, where signs of archaic habitation have been discovered, can be as cold as minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So scientists have long assumed that human settlement was not possible until about 40,000 years ago, when anatomically modern humans evolved the ability to build sophisticated shelters, make appropriate clothing, and control fire. But who left those tools behind? Because no fossils have been discovered at either site, scientists are unsure of who these early pioneers were or why they ventured so far north. To address this, the researchers proposed two possible theories. To begin, once out of Africa, approximately 2.5 million years ago, humans could have moved eastward at a remarkable rate. P. 
People had already arrived in China on the lowest plateau around 2.1 million years ago, and in Java, tropical Southeast Asia, about 1.5 million years ago. By this time, humans had colonized vast areas of Eurasia's mid to low latitudes, exploiting habitats ranging from temperate grasslands to tropical rainforest. However, it took another one million years or more for people to spread as far north as Siberia. This appears to be consistent with Jared Diamond's faster along latitude theory, which holds that climate gradients aid human dispersal. There was no better time in the last million years to do so than 400,000 years ago. But what drove these brave explorers to migrate into the frigid Arctic around 400,000 years ago? The answer is that the Earth's climate is constantly changing, and humans took advantage of the unusually warm period in the Arctic, known as Super Interglacial Stage 11. In fact, approximately 400,000 years ago, large portions of Greenland were ice-free. On the island's northwest highlands, scrubby tundra soaked up the sun's rays. Evidence suggests that the southern part of Greenland was covered by a spruce forest teeming with insects. Global sea level was much higher back then, ranging between 20 and 40 feet above current levels. Scientists have known for a long time that the Greenland ice sheet had mostly disappeared at some point in the last million years, but they don't know exactly when. The timing, around 416,000 years ago, with largely ice-free conditions lasting up to 14,000 years, is significant. At the time, Earth and its early humans were experiencing one of the most extended interglacial periods since ice sheets first covered the high latitudes 2.5 million years ago. This time coincides with the suggested split between the Neanderthal and Denisovan lineages. Studies have speculated that there may be an archaic species known only from DNA found in the basal sediments of the Denisova cave in Russia's Altai Mountains. We don't know who these people were, but there is a strong possibility that the Arctic migrants were a group of archaic humans who were the ancestors of the Denisovans. Unfortunately, the identities of these ancient explorers remain unknown due to a lack of any fossils. The central Siberian site is about 1,200 miles north of Harbin City, China, where the famous Dragon Man skull was discovered. Homo longi is an extinct species of archaic human identified from a nearly complete skull nicknamed Dragon Man from Harbin on the northeast China plain that dates back at least 146,000 years to the Middle Pleistocene. The Harbin site's northerly location has implications for Middle Pleistocene human adaptive capabilities, as winter temperatures in this region average more than 16 degrees C below zero, even during the current interglacial. The Harbin individual's extremely large size, as measured by the size of the cranium, may indicate physical adaptation to such conditions. The coexistence of several human lineages in Asia during the late Middle and late Pleistocene is most likely due to the region's diverse paleo-environments, ranging from the Gobi Desert to rainforest coastal plains to the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which provided a diverse biogeographic sink for human evolution. The central Siberian site is also about 1,500 miles northeast of Denisova Cave, where the first Denisovan was discovered. Denisova Cave's oldest occupation dates back 200,000 years. Denisovans were also known to have lived at elevations of up to 13,000 feet on the Tibetan Plateau, around 200,000 years ago, which is remarkable given that the climate was much colder at that time than it is today. In terms of morphology, some researchers classify Homo sapiens and Denisovans as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens denisovanensis, due to their overlapping morphology. In one study, multiple deeply divergent Denisovan ancestries were discovered in living populations. These Denisovan populations are known as D0, D1, and D2. After extending an archaic demographic model to include two deeply divergent Denisovan-related components, the best-fitting model shows that D1 and D2 split from the Altai Denisovan around 283,000 and 363,000 years ago, respectively. Remarkably, the ages of these divergences correspond to warm global temperatures preceded by low maxima, as revealed by analyses of Antarctic ice core data. 
Therefore, this picture is consistent with the Denisovan population that went through three cold-related bottlenecks, each followed by population expansion and dispersal. While clearly deriving from the Denisovan line, the D2 population diverged so closely to the Neanderthal-Denisovan split that it may be better classified as a third sister group. For context, even the most recent of these Denisovan divergence times is comparable to the evolutionary age of anatomically modern humans. This model predicts significant reproductive separation of multiple Denisovan-like populations over hundreds of thousands of years. Finally, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are thought to have diverged around 400,000 years ago, with the earliest proto-Neanderthals discovered in Europe at the time, including in Poland and Germany, where they hunted large beavers. Neanderthal occupation of Scandinavia has also been debated, but no evidence has been discovered due to repeated glaciations, which would have destroyed any evidence. Around 400,000 years ago, early humans in Europe hunted beavers for food and possibly for their pelts. Middle Pleistocene humans fed systematically on smaller animals, resulting in a more diverse diet than previously thought. Previously, it was believed that hominins of this age lived primarily on large mammals, such as bovids and rhinoceroses. The researchers used magnifying glasses and digital microscopes to examine the approximately 400,000-year-old bones of at least 94 beavers discovered several decades ago in Bilsingsleben, Germany. This enabled them to identify cut marks from stone tools, indicating heavy use of the beaver carcasses. It's interesting that the remains mostly show young adult beavers. This implies that hominins of the time would have intentionally hunted inexperienced but fully grown and fat-rich beavers. During the Pleistocene period, fat was a highly valuable food source, as valuable as gold today. Researchers have now demonstrated that hominin food preferences and use of pelts were much broader much earlier, explaining how humans could have spread even further north into Siberia. With fire control, the ability to hunt large and small fauna, use animal furs for clothing and construct shelters, there is no reason why large-brained humans could not have conquered the frozen north 400,000 years ago. Perhaps they even made it all the way to North America. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.